We're just going through some growing pains right now. We have a public disclosed strategy, which is we acquire Bitcoin, we hold Bitcoin, and it's a long-term strategy. I think that um, in the near term, uh, the Bitcoin price suffers pain uh, from the deleveraging and from the collapse of other parts of the crypto ecosystem in the near term. So when UST collapsed, that wasn't good for Bitcoin, right? And uh, and when other, if you have other tokens that collapse, uh, then they're cross collateralized with Bitcoin. So the fail, you know, the failure, or the collapse of a crypto hedge fund like Three Arrows, the failure or the collapse of a, a of a crypto bank like Celsius and the collapse of a crypto token like Luna. Uh, all of these things are negatives in the near term. Um, I think that uh, the ideal stable coin that you want to hold is one that's backed by cash equivalents and they disclose the assets they have every week or every day. You know, there are, there are ETFs in the US market. Like someone says, oh, okay, we're an ETF and we're going to own automobile companies. Well, they, they actually disclose uh, the equity that they hold in the ETF routinely and they're transparent about it. Like every time ARC you know, changes their holdings, you're reading about it. So that transparency builds confidence amongst investors. Yesterday I tweeted, stay humble, stack sats in an homage to Matt O'Dell and, and all of the, the Bitcoiners uh, who have known for the past decade that if you're, if you're going to arrive early uh, to a revolutionary uh, technology that's, uh, and the first digital commodity that's monetized in the history of the world, you're gonna be in for a bumpy ride. So Bitcoin is, has been a continually bumpy ride for the past you know many, many years. I think, uh, even since we got in the market, it's gone through nearly three cycles. And the only rational way to approach this is dollar cost averaging. So MicroStrategy is in essence just dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. Our strategy is we acquire Bitcoin, we hold Bitcoin, uh, and we just happen to believe that 100 years from now, uh, Bitcoin is like Manhattan and you're just going to want to hold as, as many blocks of Bitcoin as you can. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you acquired Manhattan in 1907 and 1913 and 1917 and 1921 and 1928, 1932 and 1947, and then another thing in 1953 and 57, and you ask someone, you know, what was the right time to buy? And do you regret having bought, you know, the top? I, I can't even remember which of those years were going to be the most efficient times to buy. Generally, the view is that once you find a good thing, you just want to consistently acquire more as cash flows allow you. So our strategy is simple, is right? We acquire Bitcoin, we hold Bitcoin, we don't sell Bitcoin. The world wants digital property and digital property needs to be a commodity without an issuer. And 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 the great shining example of, of creating a digital commodity is what Satoshi did. No ICO, no pre-mine, disappeared, never monetized it, not influencing it. Uh, if there's no issuer, then it starts to look similar to, to gold or or wood or lumber or wheat or land, it's a commodity. That's very important. The um, the world needs, it needs a clear regulatory clarity with regard to what all the other tokens are. So if I want to create another digital commodity, I need a way to get it endorsed as a digital commodity. The catalyst for institutional adoptions are, um, uh, there's a short list of them. One of them is, um, FASB accounting, there's this project to review accounting for digital assets on a balance sheet. And, they, and that's been formalized. And I think we expect something next year in the year 2023. It could be early next year uh, if we're fortunate. But uh, a lot of CFOs and a lot of CEOs are, are watching that. That has an impact on, uh, on the way you report your P&L and your balance sheet. I think another interesting milestone is um, is the availability of a spot ETF 
And a big milestone that we should keep our eyes on is what happens with regard to the Grayscale, the GBTC application to become a spot ETF. Because uh, there's a, a deadline coming up in July, in uh, early July. I, I don't have the exact date, July 10th, July something. Mm -hmm. And um, right now there's a process going on and the SEC has allowed individual investors to weigh in on this. And something like 11,500 letters have been submitted to the SEC, 99% positive, maybe 99 more than 99% positive, uh, overwhelmingly positive in favor of a spot ETF. I think that if, uh, if the SEC grants that, that will be the first spot ETF uh, in the history of the industry, which is, uh, which is important for a couple of reasons. A, it's enormously legitimizing for Bitcoin. B, there are a lot of people that they want to hold the security in the, in the form of an, of an ETP, it would be, uh, but um, they want to spot one. They don't want to own the futures and uh, they won't get in unless it's a spot ETP they trust. Uh, the third is that that accounting catch uh, is a problem for commodity or for the property accounting. But if you were holding the security, you would have fair market accounting. So a company that wanted to own a billion dollars of Bitcoin in market to market and fair value, they could do it through a spot ETP, but, they, but right now there is no spot ETP. So I, I think that um, that will help with institutional adoption. I think that the, the third thing is we're waiting on some joint guidance from CFTC and uh, SEC uh, regarding digital assets. I think uh, institutions are very sensitive to that. I think the fourth thing is, is we're starting to see more banks get involved in custody. I think by the end of the year, we'll see some large banks that allow you to custody your digital assets like Bitcoin uh, with them. And I think big institutions, um, they tend to, they be, they're very slow moving on uh, their accounting and on their uh, relationships. Like uh, a company might keep the same bank for 30 years, like very slow moving. So if your existing bank that you've used for 30 years says, here's a stable coin that you can use and we can custody Bitcoin, then that's a decision that can be made uh, quickly and in size. But when you're existing, when, when you have to choose between another crypto exchange, right, not your existing bank, now you've got to vet the exchange. And when you vet the exchange, there's an issue of are you licensed? What are you trading? Now you have to have an opinion on all the other cryptos. And now you have to have the opinion on all the other agencies. And now you have to have opinion on the auditors of the new entity. And then you have to have an opinion on their books. And and uh, you just took something, which is a, a, a quick, straightforward decision, and you turn it into a thousand times more complicated decision. So I think that I think that we, we are seeing more adoption. It will continue. All of these processes, they're rolling forward. But you, you just want to keep a checklist of them. And every time you see one more regulatory milestone or one more milestone where a big bulge bracket bank adopts Bitcoin and, and uh, adopts stable coins, that's a real positive bullish thing for the industry. We, we want the benefits of technology, but we want uh, protection, ethical protection, and, and we want political protection. We, we need... We need banks to embrace this. We need the governments to embrace this. We need the general public to be protected. And, and if we do that, then the industry will grow by a factor of 10 and then a factor of 100. Yeah, I think, you know, Bitcoin right now serves this role as um, a commodity store of value and a monetary metal and uh, this 10 to $12 trillion market cap. Um, the advantage of gold is the law is settled, uh, the accounting is settled, right? The regulatory status of, of gold is settled. All of the things that all the things you can do with gold, all of your capabilities, they're all settled for the past 40 years, 50 years, maybe longer. So since 1972, gold started being seriously monetized in the 70s. And uh, I think it hit like $800 an ounce by 1980 or something. And 
<laughs> so 42 years have gone by during which gold has kind of uh, been a settled asset in the Western world. We kind of understand all the rules around it and understood. Uh, Bitcoin is going through that same process this decade. I think this is the year 2020 to year 2030. This is the decade where we work out the rules of what is Bitcoin and how can it be moved and how it will be taxed and how it will be accounted. Mm -hmm. How can it be traded? How can it be stored? And so I would I would think that over the course of a decade, Bitcoin should approximate gold and should should catch up with it. And then I think in the following decade, I think Bitcoin 10x is gold. Right. So if you if you want, uh, you know, a reasonable forecast, I say kind of we beat gold in a decade and then we 10x gold the following decade. And the reason we 10x gold <clears throat> is because of technology and technology is going to be a big advantage of Bitcoin uh, in the in the first decade that we're looking at. But it'll be offset by the uncertainty and uh, and the lack of clarity uh, from regulations and the like. And those two things will kind of start to cancel each other out. But then once we get through that phase, then I think it's just all pure technology. And it's very important for us to be transparent and committed to our strategy. If I told you that our strategy was we acquire real estate in London, office commercial office buildings in London, and we hold them forever, and you were an investor of mine, and you wanted to have 5% of your portfolio invested in London real estate, then you would want me to stick to that strategy. And if you ever if you ever saw it in an interview that I said I like London, but I'm also buying, you know, vacation villas in Ibiza and I'm buying container ships in Brazil, you would think, oh, I can't trust that company. I don't know. I don't want to own container ships in Brazil. I you know, it doesn't matter whether you made money or lost money. You need to be true to your strategy and committed if you're a public company and and the public markets reward you uh, for um, for integrity.